In this episode, we'll listen to some sound samples recorded with the Mix Pre 6, the Zoom F8, and the Sound Devices 633. The idea here is just so that you can get a sense for the differences in timbre between the three. And in each case, we'll be recording with the exact same microphone, the DPA 4017B, which is a shotgun microphone, a professional grade shotgun microphone. And we're recording in my studio basement, which has concrete floors. I have a couple of sound blankets hanging up on the sides, and then the ceiling is uh, bat insulation covered with a plastic sheathing. Just as a quick test, here is the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6 with the DPA 4017B shotgun mic. It just boomed out of the frame here, 30 centimeters or so from me. Just wanted to let you hear what this sounds like in relation to some other recorders. And let's give you a few moments of silence so you can get a sense for where the noise floor sits. In this case, what I find is that the noise floor is really actually noise that is in this room and not the recorder's own generated self noise. Let me show you what I mean. There we go, that's the Mix Pre 6. Next up for comparison, we have the Zoom F8. This is in the same price category as the Mix Pre 6. This one has some slightly different features, um, but it also, from my experience, having owned it for, I think coming up almost on two years, if that's right, uh, it has very good preamplifiers as well, from my experience. It does not have analog limiters, but we have the exact same setup here, exact same location, using the exact same mic, same lights, everything the same. Um, this is the DPA 4017B, boom, just above me here, about 30 centimeters away. And let me give you a few moments of silence so you can hear what this sounds like. Again, in this case, I think mostly what you're going to hear is actually room ambiance, things that are running. I've got a freezer over on that part of the unfinished basement studio here. These lights each have fans on them, and uh, so that's most likely what you're hearing. And then finally, for comparison, this is the Sound Devices 633. This is a professional level recorder. Again, we're in the exact same scenario, same room, nothing's moved here except for we're using a different recorder. This is the DPA 4017B, boom, just above me, about 30 centimeters. And again, we have all the same noise sources in the room here, and all the settings are the same. 48 kilohertz, 24-bit recording, and we've just gained it up so that it's peaking on, in the case of the Sound Devices 633, at about 0 dB U, as opposed to about minus 18 to minus 12 dB full scale on the Mix Pre and the Zoom F8. Here's some silence. And there we have the Sound Devices 633 for comparison. Now note here, I was really trying to give you a sense of the different sounds of the different preamps. Not so much a uh, scientific measure of noise performance. And let me talk just a little bit about noise performance while we're on that. I almost feel guilty like I've created this kind of culture of <laughs> noise performance frenzy. Uh, a couple of things, number one, uh, I think the ways that I've measured noise performance of preamplifiers in the past may not have been the best ways to measure those. And so I'm still doing some ongoing research about the best ways to do that. But in practical terms here, what I can say is this. the All three of these recorders from those recordings that I've listened to have a, a low enough noise floor that you're not going to have to worry about the self-noise generated by the preamplifiers themselves. As long as you're using a decent microphone, then it would be the microphone that you'd have to worry about. But again... The noise floor is so low in terms of the self-noise generated, but really what you're going to be hearing in the silent portions is the actual noise that's in the room. There are a couple things. If you've got enough noise in the room that it's distracting, then you have a problem that you need to solve. Buying expensive recorders doesn't solve that problem. What solves that problem is managing the noise. So for example, if you've got a refrigerator humming or you've got an air conditioner running, you need to turn those off if you don't want them to be in the recording. <laughs> Um, also, if you have very a very reverberant space where you get um, a kind of, I guess in layman's terms, is technically not the right term, but echo, um, technically it's reverb. If you've got a lot of that in the space where you're recording, you need to manage that. And the best way to manage that is with sound blankets. So again, with all three of these recorders, my sense is that the self-noise generated by preamplifiers is so low that it's not really... A, it's not an, a thing, anything to worry about. Now, overall, my assessment between these three recorders is you can make great recordings with any of these three. There's no question about it in my mind. 
In terms of the timbre, the actual sound of the preamplifiers, I noticed that both of the sound devices uh, sound a little warmer. They have a little bit more bass response to them than the Zoom does. The Zoom sounded mm, not thin, but, but definitely not as warm as the sound devices. And it sounded to me like the sound devices 633 had a little bit more uh, low end response than the Mix Pre did. Again, in all three cases, you can make fantastic recordings, in my opinion. We will have more coming on the Mix Pre 6 in the coming days and weeks. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you have not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.